Can you remember your life before cell phones? A time when if you wanted to contact a friend, you'd have to leave a voicemail and then, dare I say, wait for them to call you back? A time when you memorized your friend's numbers because there was no digital contact list? A time when you might have sat in silence for a moment without constantly reaching for your cell phone? That, my friends, was 15 years ago. But it all seems like a different dimension now. Those with more interactive my proposition to you is that the use of cell phones disconnects the users from reality. And I will prove to you that point through three subpoints. One, cell phones eliminate the need for social interaction. Two, cell phones substitute moments of tranquility. And three, cell phones hinder us from recognizing the needs of others. On to my first point, that cell phones eliminate the necessity for social interaction. Michael Bugeja a communications expert from Oxford University states that cell phones serve as a tool for social isolation. Ever since the uprising of cell phone use, cell phones, the users feel more comfortable speaking through an object rather than face-to-face -face interaction. The user is either too busy or too shy to speak to others surrounding them. If one is too shy, it is because that person has become so accustomed to communicating through their phone that they would rather just text someone rather than actual actually talking to someone face to face. Cell phone users are reluctant to initiate conversations or awareness of people around them because they use the cell phone as a comfort zone. The Media Effects Research Lab at Pennsylvania State University states that we are more obligated to our phones rather than our surroundings. So we've all had this experience. We're having a face to face conversation with a friend and all of a sudden their phone rings and you just stand there anxiously waiting to resume your conversation. And this happens because society places a higher value on communication through a cellular phone than an actual person in the flesh. We do this nowadays because we prefer convenience over personal experience. The goal of modern day technology is for everything to be fast and simple, including our communication. It's much easier for a person to simply send an email or a text because it does not require the tedious walk or drive uh, to contact the other person. So if we need to say something, we say it quick through a virtual network, which is why we prefer convenience over personal experience. And to my next point, that cell phones are a substitute for silence. Chris Kelly, an English major at Santa Clara University, states that modern society is slowly eliminating what we often define as peacefulness, only to replace it with unnecessary superficial texting. Moments when we used to be able to let our minds wander or strike up a conversation with an actual person nearby are now replaced with the automatic act of using a cell phone. It is very common to search through your phone mindlessly until the period of waiting is over. The idea of being alone and tranquil has become so foreign to us. On to my next, on to my last point, that cell phones hinder the users from recognizing the needs of others. In 2008, the Open Communications Journal did an experiment to compare cell phone users and non-cell phone users' willingness to help a stranger. The researchers invited 28 students from a comm class, just like this one, to participate in their experiment. One person would go into the room, and the experimenter would give them two questionnaires. One, a uh, media trivia, celebrity and stuff, and the other a personality quiz. Uh, the experimenter then told the test subject that to go fill in, to go do the test, and that in five minutes the, the actual experiment would begin. But immediately after the experimenter left, the experiment started, by him sending an actor into the room and the actor would pretend to search for his keys, and if the student did not help him, within two minutes, the actor would leave. The results yielded that only eight out of the 28 students helped the actor look for his keys. Out of those eight, seven did not have their cell phones out, and the rest of the 21 students did. Research selected this helping behavior because it is widely known to be one of the strongest values of social interaction between strangers in our society. This suggests that people without their phones are more likely to help a person in need than those with their phones out. The experimenter concluded that 
Although research already indicates that social interaction with strangers is minimal, the presence of a cell phone reduces interaction even further. In conclusion, psychologist Kenneth Jurgen thinks that the erosion of face-to-face -face community is a moral failing. He adds that it would be a terrible irony if being connected required or encouraged a disconnection from reality, an erosion of the spontaneous encounters and everyday decencies that makes society both civilized and tolerable. And I completely agree. It is a sad reality we live in. In fact, we're not even in touch with reality because we're so engrossed in virtual reality. In that case, it's still a sad reality. The device we hold so near and dear to our heart and ear is keeping us from being aware of our reality by one, eliminating the need for social interaction, two, getting rid of our personal moments, and three, by blocking our recognition to help others. And that is why cellular devices disconnect the users from reality. Thank you. All right, Adriana, I think that uh, you state the claim very clearly at the beginning, and you have an excellent layout of what the structure is going to be. In the body of the speech, as you move to each of those points, sometimes the transitions could be a little bit smoother. Uh, summarizing Some internal summaries on those points might be a good idea. At the end of the speech, though, you, did a, you had a very nice summary, and I think that the way you deliver it also helps make your argument more effective, and you come across a lot more credible because of that. I think that uh, the strongest proof that you have is the testimony of the authorities that you're citing, but I do suspect that those authorities are not always providing us with reasons for accepting their conclusions. They are just presenting the conclusions, and I would like a little bit more explanation about how they uh, reach those particular conclusions. Otherwise, we're just you know hearing another claim. I thought the research that you cited at the end was a good place to start with that and you could use a little bit more information if any of these scholars that you cite in fact did some kind of research if you could find that research to cite it I think that would strengthen the quality of the evidence there you did a pretty good job citing the uh, sources of the evidence uh, consistently when you presented it as well so I appreciated that all right thank you much